Hey there, welcome to part two of a two-part series on this single pull double throw relay in Tinkercad. In part one, we took a look at the basics of the relay. We learned how to decipher the graphic images on the back side of the relay. And we connected an LED and a resistor to an Arduino for testing. Now we're going to connect the relay and get into how that actually works. So instead of running the LED off pin 13, we are going to run the coil off of pin 13. So we'll energize the coil. So when it energizes the coil, when we apply the voltage from pin 13 on the coil, it will flip this little switch. So at rest, it will send voltage out to this terminal. So the LED will be lit at rest. And then when we get voltage on pin 13, it will energize this coil. This thing will flip up here and we'll get voltage out on this terminal instead. I've drawn a little schematic that shows how that little black relay works. So right here is the body of the relay. Starting at the top here, this symbol represents a coil. So that's how a relay works. When you apply a voltage to a coil, the magnetic field in that coil will attract a contact here that either sends it one way or the other. So when it's at rest, there's no magnetic field here. So this contact is at rest over here and it's touching this what's considered a normally closed connector. And this is internal to the relay body. And then when you apply a voltage to this relay coil, just electronic theory dictates that when you apply a voltage to a coil, it creates a magnetic field. And so this representation of the coil is just showing us with this dotted line that the coil is either physically or magnetically connected to uh, the contactor inside the relay. So a rest called normally closed, it's this way. And then when you energize the coil, it will magnetically draw this contact point up to this point and make the circuit to what's typically called the normally open contact that would be normally open at rest. When we activate the coil, it'll pull this contact up and then the circuit will go this way and it will turn on the red LED. And because it will no longer be in contact with this point, the green LED will turn off. So that's the schematic representation of that relay that we'll look at in Tinkercad. And this is just a simple graphic representation of the Arduino. Going into the relay, you're going to have to watch out to make sure that the relay doesn't draw too much current. And you might need a suppression diode across uh, the relay coil. But I'm not going to discuss all that in this tutorial. The Tinkercad program is very forgiving. You can do this stuff. And you can just learn about the circuitry. And you can practice connecting it. And you can see how it operates. You don't have to get too concerned about, nor does the Tinkercad program allow you to get too concerned about uh, some of the details, like having a diode here or whether the current draw is right or not. Just know that this is a simplified diagram just to get some points across. One more point that I want to make about this is we have to have something to energize the coil and we have to have something going to the common connection. So in this case, what I've done is I've just made a little Arduino graphic representation here. If you're familiar with the Arduino, it's got a very basic program loaded in when you first turn it on. It's called the Blink program, and it's got an internal LED that will just blink. Again, I'll describe this in a minute when we switch back over to Tinkercad. But what it will do is it will apply a voltage to pin 13 for a second, and then it will take that voltage away from pin 13 for a second and then reapply it for a second, take it away for a second, and go on uh, for however long you've got the Arduino plugged in. So what we'll have going on here in our circuit is that we will have a voltage applied to this coil once a second. So we're going to energize this coil once a second. We're going to be pulling this contact up once a second, letting go every other second, pulling it back up again. And what's going to happen when we do that is we've got 5 volts coming out of the Arduino in this particular circuit. It's going to apply five volts through the common connector, through the green LED for one second. When the Arduino says, hey, let's apply something here for the next second, it, it energizes the coil, pulls the contact, this connection breaks, the green light goes out, this connection is made, and the red light turns on. So if that's clear as mud to you right now, have hope because we're going to go see it in action over in Tinkercad next. Okay, back at Tinkercad, let's build that circuit that we just saw the schematic for. 
So remember I talked about an Arduino creating a blink program that will just turn an LED on and off every second. So let's talk about the connections on the relay. We talked about them in the schematic. Let's see how it looks on the actual device. And I talked earlier how the common terminal is one connection. Let's switch back to that real quick. Here's the common terminal, one connection. But if we switch back now, this diagram shows that there's two connections here. These are both the same. So why they did that, I don't know. It should it typically, on most relays, it would just be a single indicator indicating that there's a single common line there. But we'll go with this. So we could connect to either one of these. And then through the common, then we're going to go to the normally closed contact here. And we'll come out through this terminal. And then when we apply a voltage to the coil, it will snap this connector from the normally closed side to the normally open side. So let's connect this baby up. So for the common, what did I do? Let's take a look at that again. For the common, I had it just getting five volts. So let's get five volts to the common. So the Arduino has got five volts available to us here someplace. Here's five volts. Let's get that. I'm just going to draw a quick little messy line here to get started. And then I'm going to clean that up a little bit just because it looks so much better. And let's turn that red, which is a typical color representation for a positive voltage wire. So we've got five volts going into the common. And then the normally closed went into what? A green LED? Let's go have a look. Normally closed went into a 1K resistor and a green LED and then to ground. Let's see if we can show these both at the same time. What do you say? There, that's much better. Okay, so we want to go to our from our common to our normally closed. And then normally closed is going to go into a 1K resistor. Let's go find our normally closed. And this relay... It's a little hard to see what's going on here, but this indicates the normally closed and it's the furthest terminal out. And the coil is this terminal and this terminal. And see another one of my videos uh, that shows how to determine which connector is connected to which terminal here. And so let's say this is the normally closed connection. We want to connect that to a resistor. So let's pull out a resistor. Let's go to basic here because that's where most of our basic stuff is. And we want an LED and we want that to be green and that's going to go to ground. Let's see here. The resistor is going to come straight out of the terminal here from normally closed. Not sure the best way to make this all happen neatly. If we move the Arduino down, let's go that way. We'll have to fix that wire. Okay, let's try this. And then if we have our resistor here and our LED, it'll look a little bit more like our connection. Let's rotate that LED. I'm hitting R to rotate. And I want negative to be down. So I'm going to rotate it all this way because this is the negative terminal, the cathode. Okay, so out of the normally closed connection, I'm going to draw a little wire here. And then from the resistor into the anode of the LED, and then from the cathode of the LED into ground. And green is a decent color for ground. I'll just stay with that. It makes it easier. And then what we're going to do, let's test that. What do you say? Let's see how close I came. First, we have to connect the coil. So I've got that going to pin 13. So let's find the coil terminal here. There it is. And I'm going to run that to pin 13. And I'm going to call that red just for fun. And the other side of the coil goes to ground. Uh, before I do this, let's show the whole thing again here. There's another there's a ground down here somewhere. There's a ground. So I'm going to run it from there over here over here, up here, up here, and then to the coil connector. There we go. I could have connected this wire to the same ground that I just connected the LED to, but I was thinking maybe it would be a little less jumbled if I put it to the second ground that's available on the Arduino. Okay, so I've got pin 13. 
going to one side of the coil, it'll come through the coil and go to ground. And so I've got the other side here coming to ground. Let's run that and just instead of wait until the very end when I wasted all my time and made a mistake, let's see if I've got this much of it hooked up properly. So let's start that simulation and let's see what happened. Look at that. The green LED is lighting and going out every second. Okay, great. So now we can connect the red LED too, and that's going to be to the normally open connection. So if we look at the relay here, so we can see this thing because it's energized now and running, we can see how that operates. So when pin 13 goes high, it energizes this coil and that coil pulls the internal connection up to the other uh, side of the contactor there. All right, so let's connect to that. We're going to connect um, from the normally open to 1K resistor and the red LED. So we just have to duplicate what we've done here. I'm going to stop the simulation, and then I'm going to connect another set of stuff here. Whoops, I have to get my stuff out here. Get rid of that first. Let's get a resistor out here, and let's get an LED out here, and tap R on my keyboard to rotate that LED. And now I can run the wire from the normally open to the resistor. And I'm going to check over here through the resistor to the LED, from the LED to ground. So we have to find a ground terminal again, and, and we'll just connect to the same one that the um, other LED is connected to. And let's just make this a little neater. Okay, good. Let's see here. I've got now coming out of the normally open through the resistor LED ground. Okay, that portion looks good. So we can run it again and let's see what happens. Look at that. They're swapping on and off. And we can see the, the relay representation here. You won't see this on a real relay, obviously. I mean, you won't actually see the diagram on the back of the relay moving. But if you happen to be using a clear relay like this one, you can actually watch the contacts move. But you probably will never come across a clear relay like this in your hobby work. Most of the relays that you use in, in hobby projects will be in cases like this that you can't see through. But in the Tinkercad representation, you can see what's happening there. And then you can compare that to the schematic. So when, when it's at rest, when there's when pin 13 is low, it's at rest, so the connection will be going through the green circuitry. When pin 13 goes high, it energizes the coil, pulls this contact up to the normally open connection, and breaks the green and turns on the red. Look at that. Isn't that impressive? In Another video, like I mentioned, I will show how to figure out which one is which here when you're looking at this. How the heck would you know which contact is going to which pin, etc. So in another video, I'll put a link down below to that video and I'll show you how that I analyze these relays and find out which pin is what. One question that we haven't really addressed and that is why would somebody use a relay? especially for a simple circuit like this, you could just connect these LEDs straight to the Arduino pins. There really is no need for that relay. If you haven't already addressed that in your own mind, one of the main reasons for a relay is to control a circuit that has a higher voltage or higher current than your controller can handle. So like the Arduino can only handle, you know, typically about 20 milliamps of current and five volts. So if you've got a bigger circuit, you can't just connect to the Arduino. You will have to go through a relay or through some external circuitry. Oh, and what a coincidence. I have got a circuit that addresses that. Let's go have a look at that. So let's switch back over here to my circuitry and let's see if I have got another circuit hidden over here. Look at this. So here what I'm showing is the same Arduino circuitry, no longer using the plus five here. Now I've got, this is external to the Arduino, just the same way it was external to the Arduino previously in the LED circuitry. And let's say that I put some fans out here and they run on 24 volts. There is no way that I can run 24 volt high current fans 
straight out of pin 13 in the Arduino. It will burn out the Arduino. So that's a purpose, one of many purposes of a relay is we can still run this relay coil out of the Arduino, but the contacts are isolated from the Arduino and they can allow me to run higher voltage, higher current without damaging the Arduino. So let's see how that works. It's really the same exact thing. We, we can run the little blink program, which just turns the coil on every other second, and that will still operate the internal contacts to the relay, but seeing as they are isolated from the Arduino, you can run your own voltage to the common terminal. In this case, I've just used 24 volts as an example. And when pin 13 is low, it will go through the normally closed connection and it will go through the fan and go to ground. And this could be anything out here. It could be a buzzer. It could be a, another LED that's a high current LED. It could be NeoPixels. It could be anything you want it to be out here. And this voltage could be anything you want. And this could actually be AC voltage too. Of course, you always want to be careful messing around with AC. All my demos are DC, low voltage DC, because it's far safer than working with AC current. Okay, so anyway, you can have anything you want out here, and it can be a higher intensity than what the Arduino or microcontroller or anything you got out here uh, can be can be a much bigger load than this thing can handle. So that's a good example for you. But even though we've got a safe side of the relay here for the Arduino, you will want to be careful. You know, there are limits to the voltage and current you can put through relay contacts. And I think the relay over here in Tinkercad addresses that. Let's see. Yeah, this says you can only put three amps, 125 volts AC through these contacts or three amps, 24 volt DC through these contacts. If you want to do more than that, then you have to get a bigger relay. And also, while we're on that kind of on that topic, if you want to control more than two things, if you want to do more than a single pole double throw, then that's when the other relay comes into play. And I'll be addressing that in another video as well. And you can find that link down below too. So if we go to, um, let's go to all and see if we can find that relay down here. What happened here? All, there we go. Find that relay, it's hiding down here someplace. Here it is. If we go look at that, let's pull it out here so we can see it bigger. So this one is a double pole, double throw relay, as we saw in the description. It doesn't say it out here, but double pole, double throw. And it shows us that on the body, although it's a little confusing, but we'll talk about that in the other video. And this one shows us that we can run one amp through this at 125 volts AC or two amps at 30 volts DC. Okay, there you have my little tutorial on using that basic relay. And as usual, if you think this video is of any value, please give it a thumbs up. That helps me to know if I'm putting out good stuff or not. And if you want to be notified every time I upload a new video, click on that subscribe button.